Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Gaurav Dhawanlal and with me is Nishit Kumar with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi appeals to students and youth to work for Atmanirbhar Bharat. Says technology will play a key role in transforming India. Completed section of Kanpur Metro Rail and Bina Panki multi-product pipeline inaugurated by Prime Minister. Government approves Corbivax and Covovax vaccines along with antiviral drug Molnupirvir for restricted emergency use on adults. Health Ministry says potential beneficiaries for getting COVID jabs can register on COVID portal from 1st of next month. Yellow alert sounded in Delhi in view of rising COVID-19 cases. Schools, colleges, sports complexes, cinemas and banquet halls closed with immediate effect. Election Commission team interacts with representatives of various political parties in Lucknow today. And in cricket, South Africa trailed by 145 runs in their first innings against India at Centurion in first cricket test till reports last came in. And Australia crushed England by an innings and 14 runs in third Ashes Test to take unassailable 3-0 series lead at Melbourne. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the new corona variant is a cause for concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact the National Helpline numbers 011-239-78046 and 1075. And now, the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed to students and youth of the country to work for making an Atmanirbhar Bharat, speaking at the 54th Convocation Ceremony of the Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur today, the Prime Minister urged students to have dreams, turn them into resolutions and achieve them. He said in the last seven years, his government has taken several steps to achieve the goal of Atmanirbhar Bharat and the students of IIT can play an important role in it. Our IITs are always a talent and technology incubation center. And IIT Kanpur has a different reputation. You have made your own company, Aqua Front Infrastructure, on the Banaras Khirikiya Ghat, the first place of floating CNG filling station in the world, is better. In the same way, you have made your own agriculture, state of our technology, दुनिया की पहली पोर्टेबल सोइल टेस्टिंग किट बनाई है। 5G टेक्नोलॉजी में तो आईटी कानपुर का काम ग्लोबल स्टैंडर्ड्स का हिस्सा बन चुका है। ये संस्थान ऐसी अनेक सफलताओं के लिए बधाई का पात्र है। Mr. Modi said the 21st century is technology driven and technology will play a key role in transforming India. Speaking about the phenomenal growth of the country in the field of startups and unicorn companies. The Prime Minister highlighted that many of them have been started by students of IITs. During the convocation, the Prime Minister launched the blockchain-based digital degrees and all students were issued digital degrees through in-house blockchain-driven technology. The technology was developed at the Institute under the National Blockchain Project. These digital degrees can be verified globally and are unforgeable. On the occasion, a total of 1,723 students received their degrees and 80 prizes and medals were given. Moreover, three honorary doctorate degrees were awarded to three eminent personalities. Professor Rohini M. Godbole, Senapati Chris Gopalakrishnan and Pandit Ojoy Chakraborty. Mr. Modi inaugurated the completed section of the Kanpur Metro Rail Project. This section is 9 kilometers long from IIT Kanpur to Moti Jheel. The Prime Minister inspected the Kanpur Metro Rail Project and undertook a metro ride from IIT Metro Station to Gita Nagar. The Prime Minister said the double-engine government of Uttar Pradesh today is trying to make up for the loss of time in the past and it is working at double the speed. 
नागपुर मेट्रो के पहले चरण का आज लोकार्पण हुआ है आगरा और मेरठ मेट्रो पर तेजी से काम चल रहा है कई अन्य शहरों में भी मेट्रो प्रस्तावित है लखनऊ नोएडा और गाजियाबाद में मेट्रो का निरंतर विस्तार किया जा रहा है जिस स्पीड से यूपी में मेट्रो का काम हो रहा है वो अभूतपूर्व है आ कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट रिपोर्ट that the entire length of the metro rail project in Kanpur is 32 kilometers and is being built at a cost of over 11000 crore rupees Kanpur is the fifth city of Uttar Pradesh where metro service has been started. In the first phase, metro is running on the 9 km priority corridor. The three-coach train service for public will start from tomorrow and the trains will be available from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Nine elevated metro stations have been constructed on this route. The second phase of metro work would be carried out between Moti Jhil and Transport Nagar for which underground stations will be constructed. The Kanpur Metro Rail project has been completed in less than a span of 2 years despite the pandemic break sushil chandra tiwari air news kanpur the bina paniki multi product pipeline project was also inaugurated by the prime minister this afternoon it is a 356 km long project with a capacity of around 3.45 million metric tons per annum extending from the bina refinery in madhya pradesh to paniki in kanpur the project has been built at a cost of over 1500 crore rupees it will help the region access petroleum products from the bina refinery the central drug standard control organization has given approval to the cobevax vaccine covax vaccine and the antiviral drug molnupiravir for restricted use in emergency situation in a series of tweets union health minister mansukh mandavia said cobevax vaccine is india's first indigenously developed rbd protein subunit vaccine against covid-19 made by the hyderabad based from balgical e the nanoparticle vaccine covovax will be manufactured by the pune based firm the serum institute of india mr mandavia said molnupiravir will now be manufactured in the country by 13 companies for restricted use under emergency situations for treatment of adult patients with covid-19 and who those have a high risk of progression of the disease In an interaction with All India Radio News, Chairman of the India's COVID-19 Working Group of the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, Dr. N.K. Arora said that the approval of these two vaccines and antiviral drug is an encouraging news for the COVID vaccination campaign. कोरबावैक्स पूर्णतः भारतीय वैक्सीन है और कोवावैक्स विदेश में बनी थी जैसे कोविशील्ड विदेश में बनी और यहां पर भी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग की जा रही है इन दोनों वैक्सीन की मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कैपेसिटी बहुत अच्छी है ये दोनों वैक्सीन भी बहुत प्रभावी वैक्सीन है बड़ों के साथ-साथ बच्चों में भी दी जा सकेगी तीसरी चीज अगर हमें बाद में वैक्सीन का बूस्टर देने की जरूरत पड़ेगी या बेहतर प्रतिरक्षण पैदा करने की जरूरत पड़ेगी तो ये हमारे बस दो विकल्प और हो गए कैडिला साइडस की जाइकोवी डी के अलावा जो एंटी मोलेवरी की बारे बात करी ये भी एक बहुत उत्साहजनक खबर है अगर जो व्यक्ति गंभीर बीमार होने लगता है उसको पहले ही अगर इस दवाई को दे दिया जाए तो वेंटिलेटर आईसीयू की जरूरत पड़ने की संभावना बहुत कम हो जाएगी The Union Health Ministry has said that the potential beneficiaries for getting the COVID jabs can register themselves on the COVIN portal from the 1st of next month. It said beneficiaries can also avail the walk-in registration facility. As announced by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, recently the vaccination for the age group of 15 to 18 years is scheduled to begin from the 3rd of next month. Administration of the precautionary third dose for the vulnerable categories will commence from the 10th of next month. Meanwhile, Union Health Ministry has intensified its efforts in coordination with states and union territories to review the rollout of vaccination for the potential beneficiaries. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan today chaired a workshop with all states and UTs to review the rollout of vaccination. On the misinformation being spread through various media regarding the requirement of a doctor's certificate to establish comorbidity at the COVID vaccination center, Union Health Secretary emphasized that the center has not issued any directions in this matter. He said prescriptions or certificates are not mandated to be produced at the CVC for administration of the precautionary dose. He also informed that Covin will send reminder messages to all those eligible beneficiaries for precautionary dose and it will reflect in the digital vaccination certificates.
India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed the 143 crore milestone today. The Union Health Ministry said more than 57 lakh COVID vaccine doses were administered today. Out of the total vaccination, more than 83 crore 97 lakh vaccine doses have been given as a first dose, while over 59 crore 10 lakh doses have been administered as a second dose. The ministry said 6,450 COVID patients recovered during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate stands at 98.40%. 653 cases of Omicron have been reported in the country so far. Out of the total Omicron cases, Maharashtra has reported 167 cases, followed by Delhi with 165, Kerala 57 cases and Telangana 55 cases. The Union Health Ministry said as of now, 186 people have recovered from the infection. In view of the rising COVID-19 cases, schools, colleges, cinema halls, spas, gyms, multiplexes, banquet halls, auditoriums and sports complexes have been closed in the national capital with immediate effect. Night curfew has been imposed in the city from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., Restrictions have been put in place as a yellow alert has been sounded in Delhi under the Graded Response Action Plan. As per the Delhi Disaster Management Authority order, the Delhi Metro and buses will operate at 50% seating capacity with no standing passengers. Restaurants are allowed 50% seating capacity from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. and bars are allowed 50% seating capacity from 12 noon to 10 p.m. Political, religious and festival gatherings have been banned. A maximum of 20 persons can attend funerals and weddings. In its order, the DDMA said weddings can only be done at home. Shops and malls will operate on an odd-even basis in the city. Religious places will be open, but no visitors will be allowed. Only walking, running and playing are allowed in public parks and gardens and not picnics. Interstate movement of buses is allowed till up to 50% of the seating capacity of a bus. Delhi government offices can function at 100% capacity for Group A officers and section officers and 50% for officers below Group A. Private offices have been allowed to function at 50% capacity. In our bilingual live phone-in program, Corona Jagrukta series, Dr. Arvind Kumar, pulmonologist, Medanta Hospital, Gurugram, will be with us today to answer the queries related to coronavirus. This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. Listeners can ask questions to the expert on telephone number 011-2342-1230 and 011-2342-1764. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.nic.in and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi appeals to students and youth to work for Atman Nirbhar Bharat, says technology will play a key role in transforming India. Completed section of Kanpur Metro Rail and Bina Paniki multi-product pipeline inaugurated by Prime Minister. Government approves Corbevax and Covovax vaccines along with antiviral drug Molnopiravir for restricted emergency use on adults. Health Minister says potential beneficiaries for getting COVID jabs can register on COVID portal from the 1st of next month. Yellow alert sounded in Delhi in view of the rising COVID-19 cases. Schools, colleges, sports complex, cinema and banquet halls closed with immediate effect. Election Commission team interacts with representatives of various political parties in Lucknow today. And in cricket, South Africa trailed by 134 runs in the first innings against India at Centurion in the first cricket test till reports last came in. And Australia crushed England by an innings and 14 runs in the third Ashes test to take an unassailable 3 0 series lead at Melbourne. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Hello.
Radio Services Division of All India Radio presents 2021, the year that was. Let us take a look at the notable events and developments in the year. From politics to sports, business to global affairs, what made headlines in the year gone by? To know more, join us on 30th December on FM Gold Channel 100.1 MHz and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website, newsonair.nic.in and on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. Welcome back to the Evening News. The full election commission, led by Chief Election Commissioner Sushil Chandra, will review the preparedness and arrangements for the upcoming Assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. The team reached Lucknow this afternoon on a three-day visit to Uttar Pradesh. The election commission interacted with representatives of various political parties today. Tomorrow, a complete review meeting will be held with the DGPs, state home ministry officials and expenditure officials. There are 403 seats in the UP Assembly. The term of the current Assembly will expire on the 14th of May, 2022. Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that the Narendra Modi government has adopted a zero-tolerance policy towards drugs. He said it should be ensured that the drug supply network in the country must be destroyed. Mr. Shah chaired the third meeting of the Apex Level Committee of the Narco Coordination Center organized by the Narcotics Control Bureau in New Delhi today. On this occasion, the Home Minister said it has to be ensured that the vision of a drug-free India given to us by Prime Minister Narendra Modi is to be realized during the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. The Chairman of the Defence Research and Development Organisation, Dr. G. Satish Reddy, handed over technology for the indigenous extreme cold weather clothing system to five Indian companies. These clothing will prove to be beneficial for the soldiers of the Indian Army who work in difficult terrain like glaciers and the Himalayan peaks. Presently, the Army imports extreme cold weather clothing and several special clothing and mountaineering equipment items for the troops deployed in high-altitude regions. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Pariksha Pe Charcha, which is held for students before their exams, will be held early next year. The registrations for the same began today and will go on till January 20th. Mr. Modi announced the plans for the next Pariksha Pe Charcha in his Man Ki Baat program on Sunday. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. Between December the 28th and the 30th, 1883, the first national-level conference of the organization, the Indian Association, was held in Kolkata. The Indian Association was founded by Surendranath Banerjee and Anand Mohan Bose in 1876. It was the most significant nationalist organization before the formation of Indian National Congress in 1885. The first session of Indian Association was presided over by Ram Tanu Lahiri, a veteran of Bengal's social reform movements. The issues discussed were self-governance, education, separation of judiciary from executive functions and greater employment of Indians in public service. <laughs> The objectives of Indian Association were to promote the political, intellectual and material advancement of the people. It advocated for the unity of people of India on the basis of common political interests and aspirations, promotion of communal harmony and the inclusion of the masses in the great public movement of the time. The Indian Association expressed its solidarity and decided its merger with the Congress in December 1886. 
एक है अपना गगन एक है अपना जहा एक है अपना वतन On the 28th of December 1885, the first session of the Indian National Congress was held in Bombay with 72 delegates. More than just a political party, it was an assembly for politically minded individuals who were interested in governmental reforms. In the first 20 years, the Congress sought greater political autonomy within the empire. However, After the 1905 partition of Bengal it raised demands for substantial political reform and eventually for complete independence from the British Empire the founding members of congress included Alan Octavian Hume Badruddin Tayyab ji Umesh Chandra Banerjee Surendranath Banerjee Feroz Shah Mehta Tara Bhai Nauru ji KT Telang GK Pillai P Rangayya Naidu and Gopal Ganesh Agarkar In 1920s under the influence of Mahatma Gandhi Congress was transformed from an assembly dominated by western educated elites to a mass organization that appealed to diverse sections of the Indian public fight together for Indian independence Ye man ka padhar hai wo bhooke vanwasi chhodo nishchay alas chhodo glan udasi यह मन का पतझर है वो भूखे वनवासी छोड़ो निष्क्रिय आलस छोड़ो ग्लान उदासी नई कोपले आने को बन के शालों में नई कोपले कुंठित जनमन की दालों में तुम विकास कामी परिवर्तन के अभ्यासी ये शाश्वत मधुर के अंतर्मुख शिशु पल्लव ये शाश्वत मधुर के अंतर्मुख शिशु पल्लव नव भावों की दीप्ति भरेंगे नव ऋतु वैभव नव श्री शोभा पान करेंगे आखे कैसे टुडे वी ऑल्सो रिमेम्बर एमिनेंट हिंदी पोएट सुमित्रा नंदन पंत who died on the 28th of December 1977 widely referred to as the third pillar of Thaiyawad he was the first hindi poet to be awarded the gyanpeet a poet of nature he was deeply influenced by mahatma gandhi rabindranath tagore and aurobindo ghosh in an ode to gandhi from his gyanpeet winner collection chidambara he said bapu tumse sun atma ka tej rashi aavahan हस उठते हैं रोम हर से पुलकित होते प्राण नहीं जानता युग विवर्त में होगा कितना जन क्षय पर मनुष्य को सत्य अहिंसा इष्ट रहेंगे निश्चय इन 1960 पंथ रिसीव द साहित्य अकादमी अवार्ड द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट ऑनर्ड हिम विद पद्म भूषण इन 1961 ही डाइड ऑन द 28 एथ ऑफ डिसम्बर नाइनटीन प्रयागराज उत्तर प्रदेश His childhood house in Kosani, Uttarakhand, has been converted into a museum. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark gold jewelry. For any consumer related complaints, please contact the National Consumer Helpline's toll free number 14404. Issued in public interest by the Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahak Jago. मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी के नेतृत्व में उत्तर प्रदेश विकास की नई रफ्तार पकड़ चुका है एक्सप्रेसवेज मेट्रो सेवाएं और एयरपोर्ट्स शुरू होने से इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के विकास के नए आयाम गढ़े जा रहे हैं चार नए एक्सप्रेसवे, पांच शहरों में मेट्रो सेवाएं शुरू और नए एयरपोर्ट्स शुरू हो चुके हैं सड़क के साथ ही अब एयर कनेक्टिविटी में भी प्रदेश का दायरा काफी बढ़ चुका है उत्तर प्रदेश देश में इकलौता राज्य है जहाँ पाँच इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट संचालित है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के ये कार्य आर्थिक और औद्योगिक विकास को पंख लगाने का काम करेंगे मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ के संकल्प से उत्तर प्रदेश का नव निर्माण हो रहा है और ये नए भारत के निर्माण में योगदान दे रहा है सोच ईमानदार काम दमदार उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार द्वारा जनहित में प्रसारित 
Center has notified the Consumer Protection Direct Selling Rules 2021. These rules shall apply to all goods and services bought or sold through direct selling, all models of direct selling, all direct selling entities offering goods and services to consumers in India, all forms of unfair trade practices across all models of direct selling. These rules shall also apply to a direct selling entity which is not established in India but offers goods or services to consumers in India. This is All India Radio giving you the news. Do you want to fly high to reach out to the skies? Do you feel proud to wear the uniform? Then join the Indian Air Force. Applications open from 1st December 2021. To apply online log in to careerindianairforce.cdac.in. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and several other leaders today remembered senior BJP leader Arun Jaitley on his birth anniversary. In a tweet, Mr. Naidu said he was a towering intellectual, an outstanding parliamentarian, able administrator, legal luminary and a gifted orator. Mr. Naidu said his selfless service to the nation will always be remembered. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said Arun Jaitley was a seasoned lawyer astute administrator and an articulate parliamentarian. Bihar Governor Pagu Chauhan and Chief Minister Nitish Kumar today paid floral tributes to former Union Minister Arun Jetli in Patna. The Sensex and the Nifty today rose around 0.9%. Both stocks gained amid positive cues from the global equity markets. The Sensex closed nearly 57,900, while the Nifty settled above 17,200, a report from the business world. The BSC Sensex climbed 477 points to trade at 57,897. The NSC Nifty also surged 147 points to trade at 17,233. In the forex market, the rupee appreciated 33 paise against the US dollar. The domestic unit closed at 74 rupees and 66 paise against the US currency. Gold prices gained 130 rupees. The precious metal was trading at 48,190 rupees per 10 grams. Silver price Prices also climbed 450 rupees to 62,750 rupees per kilogram. Rajesh Lake for AIR News. In the first cricket test, South Africa trailed by 130 runs in the first innings against India at Centurion on the third day today as the hosts were all out at 197 a short while ago. Earlier, India lost seven wickets for 55 runs during the opening session today to be all out at 327 in their first innings against South Africa and Centurion. After day two was washed out, India resumed the innings at 272 for the loss of three wickets. Not out batsman KL Rahul added just one and Ajinka Rahane added eight runs to the overnight score with Lungi and Gedi and Kagiso Rabada running through India's middle and lower order. Jaspreet Bumra 14 and Mohamed Siraj 4 added 19 runs for the 10th wicket in an otherwise disappointing batting performance by the Indians on day three. The host team bowlers, who looked rusty on day one, extracted much more out of the surface at the Superspot Park. And England surrendered the ashes on the morning of the third day of the third test as Australia crushed them by an innings and 14 runs to take an unassailable 3 nil series lead. Resuming on 31 for 4, England were bowled out for just 68 inside 81 minutes, with debutant Scott Boland taking an astonishing 6 for 7. Their final five wickets fell in the space of 30 balls as England offered the weakest of resistance in front of a jubilant home crowd at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. England 68 all out is the lowest total in Australia since March 1904 and their ninth lowest score against them in tests. And now before we close the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi appeals to students and youth to work for Atmanirbhar Bharat. Says technology will play a key role in transforming India. Completed section of Kanpur Metro Rail and Bina Paniki multi-product pipeline inaugurated by Prime Minister. Government approves Covivax and Covovax vaccines along with antiviral drug Molnupiravir for restricted emergency use on adults. Health Ministry says potential beneficiaries for getting Covid jabs can register on Covid portal from 1st of next month. Yellow alert sounded in Delhi in view of rising COVID-19 cases. Schools, colleges, sports complexes, cinemas and banquet halls closed with immediate effect. Election Commission team interacts with representatives of various political parties in Lucknow. And in cricket, South Africa trailed by 130 runs in their first innings against India at Centurion in first cricket test. And 
Australia crush England by an innings and 14 runs in third Ashes Test to take unassailable 3-0 series lead at Melbourne. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.